Hey guys, Patrick here and continuation of my little series about building my next rig. I want to talk about water cooling. A very, very sort of, um, look, and I've Googled around on YouTube and there's a lot of written instructions and there's a lot of uh, conversation about it. Um, the thing with water cooling with custom loops is that there is a lot of work to do for yourself, the designing, but there is a lot of information out there and it can get very, very confusing. I think that there's a bit too much information out there. I don't think you need that much information to sort of create a water cooling loop. There's some simple things you need to follow and simple items you need to have. So let's do a basic talk about a basic rig and that's pretty much what I'm gonna be doing. Nothing too complicated. It starts off with the reservoir, the one that holds the water. There's two things, reservoirs come in all shapes and sizes, but basically they either have a pump built in or they don't. If they don't, you'll have to get another pump, which means another unit that will need to be powered by your computer. Not an issue at all, either, either is fine, just sometimes, in my experience, that the one that's built in with the reservoir is probably not the best pump. So if you really want to buy a reliable pump, it might be an idea to look at reviews of actual separate pumps. But if you want something that looks good and looks like it's supposed to be a part, a built-in one with the reservoir is simple. The next thing you need is a CPU water block. That is probably one of the easiest things you need to buy because they're all pretty much the same and they're not going to give you that much of a benefit compared to each other, maybe one or two degrees here and there. What you want to look out for is how it looks and how easy and how much availability is on that item and especially which motherboard and CPU combo you have so it needs to fit it. Once it says it does, you can go ahead and install it on most systems. Usually Intel and AMD is interchangeable in some of them. You can have parts that are custom and they all come with a lot of screws and a lot of little uh, plastic stuff to fit it all in. So you wouldn't need to worry about it too much. So that's the next item. And if you are water cooling your graphics card, which is what you would usually do when it comes down to a custom water loop, you will need a GPU water block, which is a bit more expensive than most parts. It's about $100 to $150 for a GPU block, but most cards do support it and they're very simple. They come in three parts. You've got the top where you screw in the actual valves and the cable, or the, the, the pipes, and you've got the actual bit that goes in the graphics card. Now, I will be doing a video on how to install a GPU block on a 1080 Ti, so stay tuned for that, but that's not really the main topic of this video. It's all about water cooling, what you will need, generally speaking. Those are your basic parts that will be solid. The next thing is tubing. You can either decide to do malleable tubes, like basically any rubber plasticky type tube. And if you are doing your first water cooling uh, project, I would suggest that one because it's a lot easier to work with. There's lots, less things that can go wrong and you don't have to use a heat gun to do the acrylics or the PEG type tubes. But if you are doing those, you also will get a barb. Now here's a really awesome tip that I found that I've used before. If you are using a barb, which I'll show a few images here, use one that is a bit bigger than the inner diameter of your pipe or the, the rubber tube. And what you'll do, have a glass of very hot water, dip the tube and put it over the barb after it's screwed into your item or the graphics card or whichever pipe bit you are screwing into. That way it will go on a bit tighter and once it cools it will contract and you will never ever have a leak. That is my recommendation. It's going to be tough to get off or to Move it again, but once it's on, it will be on and it will come off. And you can create a locked in loop with that. There is no way to really break it from that point on. Compared to acrylics, which are, you know, rubber seals around it, you might have a bit of issue with it. Now I'm gonna show you all the bits here. Well, I'm doing an acrylic build this time. And so I will be doing a lot more tinkering and a lot more use of the heat gun. Finally, the liquid. What should you put in? Over here, I have a thermal take red liquid. Do not buy this. Do not buy anything that is colored or has any little bits and pieces inside. And here's an example. See all that crap at the bottom? That will be inside your pump and that will be inside your loop, inside your parts. I used it in my previous build and I'm going to be cleaning that out for yonks because I have to use it, I have to use the pump for my new build and buy a new pump. 
But the reason I'm doing this is because of looks. If you're happy to clean your loop every so often, every six months, then go ahead and get one of these. But if you want it to stay around longer, you don't plan on tinkering with it as much, just use distilled water. You can either buy it, or you can basically distill it yourself. So look up a, on Google or YouTube how to distill water, very simple. Uh, you might need a few bits and pieces, but it's not too hard at all. So guys, my recommendation is don't, don't use it if you don't need to, unless it's for looks. And look, unfortunately I'm going for a bit of a look, I want it to present well, and I want it to be in my video, so that's why I'm doing it. Okay? The next thing I got is for cutting acrylic tubes. So we're moving into what I'm going to be doing. And cutting acrylic tubes is a little bit more difficult than usual. I have this tool, eight bucks from Bunnings. It will cut through the tubes very easily and hopefully not leave so much rough corners. Um, but I do recommend getting some sandpaper because you need it to be very, very smooth when you round it off and put it into your fittings. So I'll get this out just to sort of show you what I'm talking about. This is just the fitting. Your pipe will go in here. This will come off. And there'll be some rubber grommets there. The tube will go in, this will be on the tube. You'll screw it down and put the pressure on the tube and the fittings. That way, when you have it in there, it shouldn't leak. The reason you wanna use the sandpaper is to make sure that it touches very smoothly inside so there is no leaks. Once it's in, it's in, and you should be good to go. These are about $8 each. It could get very expensive when you want to have multiple runs. You can also do corners, so you don't have to bend the acrylic with a heat gun, but that will cost you even more within your budget. So if you want to have nice smooth corners, I recommend just using a heat gun and bending these. And I'll have a video on how to bend and how to get those nice measurements. But I will tell you, getting those nice measurements is really using your eye and having a bit of fun. Don't worry, buy a lot of the acrylic or the PEGs and just, just play around with it before you actually start doing it. And that way you can get used to how it bends, how it works, and when you do apply it, you can measure it out very easily within your own mind and eye. So inside the box, we, for the doing all this, for bending acrylics, we need a few very basic tools and if you don't have it, do not start bending your acrylics. The first thing you have is this silicon tube. And if I can just get it out of this packet. Oh, it's a bit annoying, isn't it? So what is this acrylic tube for? Well, let me show you. Let me demonstrate what you're gonna be doing with it. Here is your acrylic pipe. Let me get one out. We're gonna get one out. Good stuff. With this acrylic tube and this silicon pipe, you're gonna put this inside and you're gonna push it through. Now I recommend using a little bit of soapy water, but obviously right now I don't have any soapy water with me and it's a bit hard to put it through. But what you're gonna do is put it in. So once you heat a side of it and you start bending it, this will push and pressure the sides of the tube so it won't just fold in on itself and it will actually fold very cleanly around the way you wanna do it. Now in the video that I'll be showing you how to do this, I'll go into more detail, but this is one of the main tools you need. Without this, don't even start. The next tool that comes in the box is actually a little bit of a cutting tool. Now I know I said I've got the uh, thing over here from Bunnings, but this is actually more useful to a certain type of uh, thing. So if you've got the rubber ones, this one can cut rubber ones. Um, I don't try to cut the acrylics with this. It'll just shatter, uh, obviously, we all know what this is for. So it comes in here, I know it's weird that it gives you like this and this, like what are you supposed to do? You're not gonna be cutting the acrylic tubes with this, but I don't know, just they give it to you, I suppose. But we also have this. Now some of you may think you need it, okay? So you put the pipe in there and you start heating it up and, and whatnot, and then you can bend it to a angle you want. But in my experience, you don't need to use it. This is just a guide. Once you start heating it and you hold it on one end and let the weight of it take, take that bend, naturally it will go at a 90 degree and you can see it. You can just hold it and once it start, the weight of it starts taking it down, you'll be able to see it and all you have to do is once you take it off the heat, 
you just blow on it for a little bit and you can get very, very nice and very custom runs. This, I think you should just practice on this and just see how well it works or, you know, or doesn't. I mean, if you want to do a perfect 180, this is probably best to do it. But if you're doing 90 degree bends, this probably not the best use. If you just want to go bend one side and then bend the other one like that, it's fine to use just your eye and natural eye. So the other thing you have to keep in mention is when you bend is make sure that the bends both end up being like this, not like that. You don't want that happening. So make sure you keep an eye on it. And what else is in this box? We've got, this is probably another important part you need. Uh, you can use sandpaper, but with this, you can get very equal sides. So what this is for is that if you have your acrylic thing, you put this in, it's got sharp things, go like that, and it'll bore out a nice smooth insides, and then you do the outside with this, doing it over the box. That way it's all smooth. And that's usually after the cut, not, I know this has already been cut, but just after the cut, you'll do that. Now remember, do it a few times. Don't stress that, you, you know, it's cutting it. You wanna do it a few times. It's not, nothing bad. So once it's there, clean it out and you'll have a nice smooth way to put it into the fitting. Guys, I think that is pretty much enough. You've got a few more bits and pieces here. Uh, a bit of sandpaper, like I said. Um, all you have to do is just take care of your builds and the runs you do. Once you've done that, it really shouldn't leak. But once you have created your loop, stuff toilet paper inside, and I know you've seen it on the videos, we put all this toilet paper around there, do it. It's not a joke, do it in there. Make sure it's all nice and clean. Do not power on your motherboard. Just power through uh, the actual uh, PSU and there's an instruction on the how to do that. You can stick a bit of a wire between two pins and it will boot up and power your pump. Let it run for a bit. I know it's hard. I know you just want to get to doing the rest of the build and I mean, get playing on your new rig, but guys, let it run for a bit because Sometimes something can just go wrong a little while and can spill out onto your brand new gear if you're building a new rig and it could be a huge disaster. So guys, thank you very much for joining me. This, for example, is only 50 bucks from Bunnings. Um, these things, obviously eight bucks each, but when you don't have to do your corners with uh, 90 degree shapes, you can save, so you only need however many units you have. So CPU is two, graphics card is two, your pump is two, and your reservoir is two. And obviously your radiator, which I forgot to mention before. Radiators, very forgettable, but they're the ones that actually cool your system. So guys, thank you very much for joining me and I hope to see you in a next video, actually building it hopefully. This has just been an overview of all the tools you will need and all the tools that I will be using and I'll be definitely showing you a video on how that all works out. Guys, thank you very much.